Hi and welcome back. Change and leadership is something that has been much researched by the academic world. We today go to Durham University, one of the top five universities in the UK, more specifically to meet Professor Julie Hodges, who is the Associate Dean of Durham University Business School. She has a rich experience in the industry before branching out into the academic world. Herself, being a professor in change and leadership, has authored seven books on the subject and is well known for her research and her views on leadership and change. So let's listen to her in terms of what she thinks is going on right now and the future of leadership. Hi, it's good to be here. So Julie, you are the Associate Dean for Durham University Business School and as well as a professor specializing in leadership and change. And we are in the middle of unprecedented change and unprecedented things going on in the world. How do you see things when people are talking about the fact that we are now moving to a new normal? Do you agree with that? Do you see that we are now settling something new? What are the challenges? As some parts of the world start to loosen restrictions, leaders need to move from crisis response to, to thinking about the role of organizations and leadership in the longer term. And the transition will be gradual and it will be uneven. What we need to think about is not a new normal, but a new reality, a new now. And, and for leaders, the challenge of guiding people through uncertainty and into the new reality um, requires them very much to focus on the, the people and to engage them within change. I think that you know, when employees experience sudden and radical change, um, such as the need to work remotely or in highly restricted workplaces for an extended period, it, it does require effective leadership, but perhaps leadership in a different way to what we've been used to up until now. So tell me more, when you say a bit of a different style of leadership, what do you mean by that? What would not work that used to work and what do you see would maybe have to shift? Yeah, I think what's really important is obviously for, for leaders to use, you know, some of the, 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 the qualities that we're very familiar with. So empathy and flexibility. And I think it's vital that leaders that are able to, to focus and look at what they have learned from the pandemic and look at what does that mean for leadership capabilities. So we, we can't go back to traditional styles of you know, hierarchical leadership now, particularly when people have been self-managing through this uh, crisis, where they have learned to work at home and work effectively at home on their own. So people working from home uh, brings a bigger challenge to leadership. It's not just that people are self-managing, but um, how do leaders manage to now create a culture or to keep a culture when people are working remotely? Yeah, a, a culture is very difficult to change. It's part of the deep roots of an organization and it's very hard to get down to, to dig up and to, to sort of move these deep, deep roots. Um, trying to change a culture overall is, is nigh on impossible. But what can happen though is that elements of culture can change. So those elements of culture, um, such as leadership and management styles, such as systems, such as processes, such as the stories that are told in the organization, um, such as the way people um, communicate, for example. So, you know, in recent months, we have seen a real shift from people communicating face to face to using things like Zoom MS Teams. So it's about changing gradually these elements of a culture that are, are vital. And we really want to be in any organization trying to change a culture towards building something which is sustainable or to grow an organization. That requires eventually change, you know, not just for culture, but bringing change, which you are a specialist on. How do you see leaders bringing across this change? How do you get people to engage? And I think your previous book was about really engaging people through the change process. How do you get people to do that? Yeah, I, I think it, it is about um, 
leaders very much focusing on what are the people priorities in the organization at the moment because during the crisis we've seen an accelerated adoption of of smart work so such as remote working a reduction in travel more virtual meetings and, and such smart work will become the standard across organizations and, and leaders need to be able to map out how this is going to happen and what it means for people not only continuing to work on their daily tasks and the daily business that they're responsible for, but what does that mean in terms of actually engaging with change? And I think one of the key elements with change now is, is that we've all been used to so-called incremental change. So that's change that happens gradually. What we have seen through the, the impact of COVID is emergent change that you can't necessarily plan for because it will happen unexpectedly. And, and this requires, I guess it, it requires leaders to have the capability to be able to, to, to um, manage a crisis, to react in terms of how they make decisions. And that may mean making decisions that they then need to change. But what's important when there's this flexibility in making changes to decisions is transparency. So what we're seeing at the moment is we're seeing a lot of leaders making changes, but not giving the background to why they have made changes. So I think that's gonna be vital in terms of it. Engaging people in change is all about communication. It is about having dialogue, both online, either via Zooms or MS Teams, but also then what does that mean for dialogue within the workplace too. A lot of how Zoom is being used at the moment is, is fairly formal um, and doesn't really create an environment for informal discussions. And, and for change to be effective is where people have opportunities to be able to raise their concerns, their fears, but also their ideas and their hopes and the ways that things can be changed. I, I think the other the other element also though of engaging people with change is making sure that they have the capabilities. And, and we're seeing it that a lot of people, although change, you know, there's, there's that great saying that says change is the one constant in, in, in our life at the moment. And that definitely has been the case over the last few months but when it comes to having the relevant skills knowledge and experience to effectively engage and work with change then uh, research shows that very few people have that right which tells me that somebody should be managing the change in an organization and maybe to not just be the leaders themselves and you've got an important role which is the hr now your latest book uh, which will be releasing soon is about the role of HR in change. Can you tell us a bit more about your research, a bit of a precursor to your book? So the book is based on a global research study that I carried out among 500 HR managers and non-HR managers across the globe. And the main basis of, of the book is to look at where does HR go next um, in terms of its role and it questions whether even there's a role for HR in the future. So what it looks at is, is HR that has been very stuck in a so-called transactional role is actually looking at the potential for, for HR to move to a much more transformational role. What that means is there, there has to be much more EHR. So HR has to go online in terms of all the transactional activities. But to shift a transformational role means HR not doing change, but being able to, to support and facilitate change. Um, so it's about what does that role mean in terms of HR being able to build its credibility, its reputation, and to add value within the context of, of change in organizations. And is there any specific areas that they want the value to be added in? Yeah, so I think the, the role does need to evolve to focus on transformational activities, the activities that add a value at a more strategic level in an organization. And this will require 
um, a different structure within HR. It requires questions to be asked about how does HR engage with other functions within the organization. For example, the, the OD, the organization development function. How does it engage with the IT function, the marketing function? It also um, raises questions about HR governance as well and what that should look like. And then finally, it, th there is a definite focus on analytics and how HR are using um, data analytics. The, 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 the challenge is if, that if HR don't evolve and reshape, then what is the future for HR? Part of it is that actually HR need to let go of the transactional elements and that managers need to effectively manage their people. So that there's a number of, of, of challenges within organizations, I think, um, that need to be faced both by, by leaders, managers, and also about the HR function moving forward. Great, so really what I, what I hear is that HR going forward should stop being seen as a support function, but really as a function that is together with business and addressing the strategic issues together with the frontliners. Uh, Julie, thank you very much for being here. It's been an honor to have you on, on the show. Thank you. Now that was really insightful, not just in terms of how leaders should act in terms of change management, but more specifically through the research that she has carried out, the role of HR and the pressure that is going to be built on them in terms of adding more value to organizations. These people are themselves the custodian of change management in companies and will be under pressure to change their way of thinking and their way of acting. Let's see how that pans out. But until next time, you keep safe.